wonderful, wonderful week. Um, I realised when I was editing last week's video, I hardly ever introduced myself, so I thought I should. Uh, I am Shona, and I own and run Service Faction, which is an online fabric shop and also a fabric shop and sewing school based in Wokingham in Berkshire. Yeah, I thought it was just a little bit rude that sometimes I forget to say who I am before I start blabbering on. But yeah, I'm Shona, so welcome to my channel and thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about jersey and knit fabrics or jersey slash knit fabrics um, and sewing with them because they are amazing and I love them and lots of people are scared of them so I'm hoping to have a little chat today um, give you some tips on how you can sew jersey with a sewing machine and make life a little bit easier for yourself. So before we start um, talking about Jersey and my top tips, um, it'd be really, really appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. Um, I would really, really love for you to join in the channel, watch more of my videos, um, and if you subscribe, you can also um, get notifications so that you see the videos as they pop up every week. So um, if you could just take a second to do that, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. So one of the most common questions I get asked about jersey or knit fabrics is can you sew it on a normal machine or don't you have to have an overlocker so an overlocker is a wonderful wonderful thing but you absolutely do not have to have one to sew jersey you can sew jersey on your normal sewing machine and that's what I'm going to focus on talking about today um, I might do if you guys are interested a separate video with some tips on getting to grips with your overlocker um, we do an overlocker 101 class in the studio which is really popular because I know people are often quite intimidated with them but today um, I'm just going to talk about how you can sew jersey nice and simply on your sewing machine and get a nice finish and there are so many really really good reasons to sew with jersey um, and not be scared of it number one it's super cozy I bet if you looked in your wardrobe and um, at some of your ready-to-wear clothes a lot of them would be from stretchy knit fabrics, your t-shirts, your tops, things like that. Um, lots of jersey wrap dresses, those kind of things. Ready to wear often is um, made from stretch fabrics. So super comfy. Um, fitting wise, it's a lot more forgiving. So um, things like full bust adjustments and um, just having to generally fit your clothes you don't have to do quite as much with jersey because it molds around you um, so that's a big positive um, and yeah it's just really nice to wear and work with once you feel comfortable with it and it's actually quicker to sew up very often than it is with woven fabrics and stretch patterns are obviously uh, of obviously are often um, quite a bit simpler so um, yeah let's get into the top tips that I've got. So the first thing to understand is the difference between a woven and a jersey or knit fabric. So a woven fabric is something like a cotton or a denim or a fabric that doesn't have very much movement in it at all. I should have had one to show you rather than just pulling some imaginary air. Um, but it is fabric that is made traditional kind of loom style. So you have a warp and a weft thread and traditionally they would have been made on a loom and now more often than not it's made on a larger mechanical loom but your threads, your threads run um, horizontally and vertically and that is uh, a woven fabric. With a knit or a jersey fabric it is, if you imagine knitting and how again it wouldn't be great if I had an actual pair of knitting needles to show you. If you imagine knitted fabric, uh, sorry knitted um, wool and how you knit with that um, or if you imagine a pair of tights and how that looks and how it's knitted together that is what um, jersey or knit fabric is, it is a knitted fabric so the construction of it is different so sometimes you'll get a, what we call a stretch cotton or a stretch denim and that is a woven fabric that has some elastane or some kind of fibre put into that warp and weft weave to give it a little bit of stretch whereas jersey and knit fabrics get its stretch, I do have some jersey fabric here this is a crazy cat print that we had in the shop um, last year and I bagsied some to um, make myself a pyjama top but I haven't yet. I'm just going to have a quick slap of my tea because my throat is very croaky. Um, yeah, so 
a jersey fabric gets its stretch from the fact that it is knitted in that way so you do have to treat it a little bit differently to woven fabric to get the best results from it but as I say it is still nice and simple to work with so my first tip before you even start thinking about sewing is how you cut out um, stretch fabric so um, I prefer to use a cutting mat and a rotary cutter I love these um, these are the really pretty ones that we sell in the shop um, and pattern weights so instead of pinning and then cutting my fabric when I'm sewing with jersey um, I will lay out my pattern pieces on a cutting mat I will use the pattern weights to weigh them down um, you can use we've got loads of different designs of these but you could use a tin of beans if you want just anything to keep your fabric in place um, it stops it from shifting around helps stop um, sometimes jersey has a tendency for the edges to curl and um, keeping it nice and flat and using a really sharp rotary cutter blade um, can really really help that and it also speeds up the process so my top tip is before you even start sewing think about the way you're going to cut your fabric you can cut it with scissors absolutely fine um, but I think if you give using a rotary cutter a try you will find that you don't want to go back my next tip is think about your needle and thread so your needles I don't know if you can see that, I don't know if that's going to focus in. Your needles for sewing with jersey um, knit fabrics need to be slightly different than your standard machine needles. So with a um, jersey or stretch needle, which are the most common types you'll see, so that's a stretch needle, um, but you also see um, jersey on that, I'll talk about the difference in a minute. They have a slightly rounded tip, so it'll still feel sharp if you stick it on the end of your finger but um, they're commonly referred to as ballpoint needles and because of the way a uh, jersey fabric is knitted as I talked about earlier what that does is instead of um, a standard needle which would pierce through the fibres of the fabric and possibly lead to snagging or stitches that skip a ballpoint needle pushes those fibres away um, and therefore helps you create a nice neat stitch. The other thing with a ballpoint needle is that the eye is ever so slightly higher up on the needle and therefore when it stitches it makes a slightly longer stitch so you've got a little bit more wiggle room in your line of stitching uh, so that when your stitches move they don't pop. I find that stretch needles are um, better for things like viscose jerseys, jerseys that have got quite a bit of drape and quite a bit of movement um, and I find that jersey needles are better for things like cotton jerseys like this or double knits or ponties that are a little bit more stable um, but it will be a little bit of trial and error because everyone's machines, um, different makes and models often um, prefer slightly different but stretch or jersey needles will really really help you save you getting skipped stitches um, the other thing that will really really help you is using a good quality thread so when you are sewing with cottons especially or basic woven fabrics you can often get away with using those cheaper fluffier threads when you're sewing with jersey, most machines do not like it if you're using a cheaper, fluffier thread. And I'm going to give you an example. When I bought my machine four, four and a half years ago, it was beautiful um, when sewing woven fabrics. Um, every time I tried to stitch with jersey, I was using the right needles, um, I had the right settings on my machine, um, it would skip stitches to the point where I phoned the company that I got it from, who were incredibly helpful, um, <laughs> didn't make me feel silly in the slightest. They sent me a reel of Gutterman thread, even though I had plenty of Gutterman thread um, at home, but I was using the cheap threads that had come with my machine. As soon as I switched to the better quality thread, um, it was like a whole new machine. Um, well, as I say, when you're sew sewing with waving fabrics, because they're more stable, you can get away with a little bit more, but you really need a good quality thread when you're sewing with jersey, and you will find it makes a lot of difference. Um, and that's not a sales pitch, because we sell Goodman thread, lots of other good quality threads will work too. Um, but just if you're uh, 
stitches are skipping, check your needle and check your thread. So the third thing to think about is the stitch that you're going to use on your sewing machine. So I'm going to talk about two different types of specialty stretch stitches that your machine may have, but don't panic if your machine doesn't have these because you can still sew jersey. You don't want to sew a standard straight stitch on a jersey fabric. If you imagine that I'd sewn a straight stitch across this nice stretchy fabric, I love this print so much, I really do have to make up my pyjama t-shirt, um, I would sew my, stretch, uh, my straight stitch as normal and then as soon as I put this on and stretched it over my hips or my bust or my neckline, wherever I needed a little bit of stretch, those straight stitches are going to pop. Um, really commonly happens around the hem and areas where, as I say, they do get stretched. So you don't want to use your standard straight stitch. The first type of stitch that you might have on your machine is um, what's known as a triple stitch. And I'm going to put a little um, picture of what that might look like on the key on the front of your machine. Sorry, every time I move, I'm making a squeaking sound on the table. I don't know if you can hear it. I might pull my sleeve down because that could be a bit unfortunate. <laughs> so um, yes, sorry, I digress. A triple stitch. So this uh, stitch has a lot of stretch in it because it sews each stitch three times. So on the diagram on your machine it looks like three lines of stitching. It's not. It sews a single line of stitch but it sews each stitch three times. So you could, if you've got this stitch, have a little practice um, on some jersey scraps and see what it looks like. It takes a very long time because it sews each stitch three times, but what it does is it gives you more room to pull the stitch. So that is one way you could use a speciality stretch stitch on your machine. That stitch, as an aside, is also good if you're trying to top stitch and you don't have top stitching thread um, just on a normal woven fabric because it gives a thicker looking stitch. But anyway, um, the second kind of stretch stitch that you might have on your machine uh, looks a little bit like a lightning bolt. I'll pop a picture up here as well. Um, and again, that is a straight stitch but it has a little bit of a zigzag in it so that you've got some wiggle room so that that little lightning bolt can be stretched out and your seam can move. If you don't have either of those stitches on your machine, do not worry, all you need to do is use a zigzag stitch. So if you've got a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, you can sew with jersey. You just need to select a relatively short um, a narrow zigzag and you'll practice depending on the type of fabric that you're using so if you were using a, a cotton jersey like this or a viscose jersey have a play around with the length and width of your zigzag um, but essentially your zigzag will stretch until that zigzag goes into a straight line without popping so um, you don't want to be able to see obviously big gaps so you don't want a zigzag that is too long in length or width um, so I normally find I use I think I normally use 2.5 length and a 2 width but that's on my Janome um, machine so it may be different on or it will it will be different um, potentially on your machine but have a little practice with the length and width of your zigzag stitch and you will be able to sew um, your jersey seams together perfectly and you can use um, a nice zigzag stitch to finish your hems and your necklines and your um, sleeves etc um, as well so perfecting a good zigzag stitch on your machine is probably the number one thing you can do to get comfortable sewing with, with jersey. Okay, the fourth thing that you can do um, if you don't want to use a speciality stitch or even a zigzag stitch or you've tried it with a zigzag stitch and now you want to step it up a little bit is you can use this little tool which has been sat behind me. This is a different machine foot. So this is a walking foot. Really popular with quilters. Um, often, um, so it's often called a walking foot but also known as an even feed foot um, and this attaches to the whole foot of your machine comes off and this attaches to the uh, shank that uh, your feet go on 
and this arm stays up over the screw that your needle is attached with. Um, this is called an even feed foot sometimes because I'm hoping that that will focus in if I take my there we go can you see on there you've got some little feed dogs so these rough little feet on here are just like the rough little feet on the bottom of your machine underneath your machine fit and they're called feed dogs and what they do is they feed the fabric through so when you're sewing um, you know obviously you don't have to move the fabric uh, you don't have to pull it from the other side or push it too much because the feed dogs do the work for you but your normal standard presser foot doesn't have any feed dogs on it so um, it can be fed slightly unevenly because the feed dogs on the bottom are putting it through a different rate of pressure and different rate of speed than a standard foot. If you use a walking foot, because it's got these little grips um, and these feed dogs here, it means that your fabric is being put through evenly from the top and the bottom. So that's really, really great for um, sewing with stretch fabrics because it means that your top layer of fabric isn't going to be stretched out by that standard pressure uh, presser foot pressure pulling on it. Um, so I would definitely say if you're planning on sewing with knits and don't want to invest in an overlocker, you've had a go with sewing with zigzags, etc. But you want to step it up a little bit and get an even better finish without having to invest in an overlocker, invest in one of these uh, bad boys. They are fantastic. Um, and to be honest, I pretty much keep this on my machine 90% of the time because... Um, you can use it for wovens and things as well, it just means that everything's being fed through evenly. Um, obviously if you wanted to insert zips and do various other things you'd need to change the foot, but it is a pretty handy little tool. You can get universal ones, um, so by that I mean you wouldn't have to buy the one that is um, from your machine manufacturer. I've got one from uh, Amazon. Excuse me which I think cost me about 10, 10, 12 pounds. I would say it's very clankety, clankety and a little bit noisy compared to the um, manufacturer, sorry, it's my arm again, um, compared to the manufacturer um, made ones. So you do get what you pay for, but if you wanted to give it a try and you didn't want to spend, I think these, um, this is a Janome one, I think this retails at about £39. So it's not the cheapest addition to your sewing machine, but um, I think you'll find it'll make a really big difference and you'll use it for a lot of things. Um, and as I say, if you're already a quilter, you've probably already got one of these. So my final tip, is do not stretch your fabric too much as you're sewing so it can be really tempting as your jersey is going through the machine to pull it if you do that when it comes out you'll find that you get very wavy seams or you may also skip stitches as you go so just like when you're sewing normally just try and let the machine do the work for you especially easy if you've got a walking foot on there. Um, you don't want to be pulling from um, the uh, back side of the machine um, and you don't want to be stretching it too much as it goes through. The only time that you would want to do that is when you're easing something in. So say you're stretching a neck band and you want to stretch it enough so that it sits flat um, or say sleeves because they're normally set in the flat with jersey um, and you have to ease them a little bit but otherwise when you're doing your straight seams um, or your hems um, try not to stretch it too much at all because otherwise you you can end up with a little bit of waving and a little bit of unevenness um, can often be fixed with a hot steamy iron but still it's better not to do it at all if you can help it. Okay, um, the final thing, um, part of the same thing really, it's kind of getting that nice finish, is that you don't have to worry about finishing jersey. So jersey doesn't fray, which is one of the most wonderful things about it. So you don't need to worry about zigzagging your seams, French seaming, you can cut your jersey out of your, or cut your pattern pieces out of your jersey and sew them up and it's done. Um, you might want to put a hem on it because it's neater and it gives a nicer finish but your inside seams 
don't worry about it. They'll go through the wash, they won't come undone, they won't fray. Um, yeah, super, super quick. That's one of the other reasons why if you cut it out with a rotary cutter to start with, you get a much cleaner, sharper finish, um, which looks a lot nicer on the inside. Whereas if you've got a slightly uneven um, cut edge from scissors, um, it might not always look as nice leaving it unfinished. But um, if you don't mind, no one else is gonna see anyway. You can leave it unfinished. So in short, think about how you're cutting it maybe invest in a rotary cutter and a cutting mat obviously don't cut with a rotary cutter if you haven't got a cutting mat because your table or floor will not thank you um, think about your needle and thread make sure you've got the right needle for the type of jersey that you're sewing with and that you've got good quality thread choose the correct stitch so a triple stitch a lighting stitch um, or a zigzag stitch and decide the length and width of your zigzag stitch maybe invest in a walking foot if you find that you're going to be sewing um, a lot of jersey um, because that will save you um, a lot of time and give you a really good finish and then also remember not to stretch your fabric and um, don't worry about finishing the seams so there are loads and loads of plus points of sewing with jersey and I hope that this video has helped um, maybe give you that little push to sew with it even if you haven't got an overlocker or if you have got an overlocker and it's locked in a box somewhere and you're too worried to get it out you can still sew away on your sewing machine um, so yeah get sewing all the stretchy patterns I will maybe do another vlog on my favorite um, jersey sewing patterns if you guys would be interested in that and as I say I can also do a vlog um, with some tips for the overlocker if um, you want me to just let me know in the comments below um, and also if you've got any tips um, for other people on sewing with jersey then again please leave them in the comments because it's really helpful for everyone to have a little read. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it guys. I will be in France when you are watching this so um, I'm hoping that the weather has helped and I've managed to get my work done. Uh, next week's video I think is going to be either a review of the Tilly and the Buttons Stevie pattern or some of my fabric favourites from the shop. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, maybe let me know in the comments what you would prefer but um, if you haven't already it'd be wonderful if you could subscribe and if you liked the video please do give me a thumbs up and I will see you all next week have a good one guys bye